Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you all. Merry Christmas, everyone. And as we celebrate the baptism of the Lord today, we are celebrating the last day of the Christmas season. We're also aware that as much as ever, our nation and our world really needs our newborn Prince of Peace, don't we? We need Jesus Christ. Of course, we know that peace is doesn't begin with politicians and governments, does it? It begins in every single human heart. So let's pause for a moment and examine our own hearts and ask the Lord forgiveness for all of our sins and for any ways that we've brought hurt and division into our world. Lord Jesus, your word strengthens our faith. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your life encourages our hope. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Eucharist increases our love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray.
almighty, ever-living God, who, when Christ had been baptized in the River Jordan, and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved Son, grant that your children by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well-pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, This is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one with whom I am pleased, upon whom I have put my spirit. He shall bring forth justice to the nations, not crying out, not shouting, not making his voice heard in the street. A bruised reed he shall not break, and a smoldering wick he shall not quench until he establishes, establishes justice on the earth. The coastlands will wait for his teaching. I, the Lord, have called you for the victory of justice. I have grasped you by the hand. I formed you and set you as a covenant of the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes of the blind, to bring out prisoners from confinement, and from the dungeon those who live in darkness. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. 
Peter proceeded to speak to those gathered in the house of Cornelius, saying, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. You know the word that he sent to the Israelites as he proclaimed peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. What has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. This is what he proclaimed, one mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. It happened in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized in the Jordan by John. On coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens being torn open and the Spirit, like a dove, descending upon him. And a voice came from the heavens, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Boy, the church looks beautiful, doesn't it? I hate to see the Christmas decorations come down after today, but uh, you know, with or without decorations, we can keep the, the peace and the joy and the love of Christmas alive in our hearts all year long, can't we? Every single day. Here in the Midwest, having access to enough water for our daily lives isn't usually an issue. You know, droughts for us are typically pretty few and far between. In fact, it seems in most of our recent springs, we've had more than enough rain than necessary, which made it even difficult for our farmers to get out in the fields to plant their crops. Now, having enough water usually isn't a concern for us in the Midwest. Now, the western parts of our country have not been so fortunate, though, have they? Some of the states out west have been in drought conditions for years now. I remember once reading about a very unusual drought, though, too, one that took place in England in Great Britain. You know, it might seem funny to talk about a drought on an island nation that's surrounded by water, but it was anything but funny for the Brits when it happened. You know, cities put the typical bans on watering lawns and gardens, and people were encouraged not to wash their cars, not even to wash their clothes. It got so bad that eventually the British government had to send fleets of these huge tanker trucks full of water to areas of the country where water was scarce. That's what happens with a drought, isn't it? 
suddenly something which we all tend to take for granted isn't available anymore. How often do we use water every day? Washing our hands, the dishes, the laundry, watering the house plants, and on and on. We don't even think twice about it. But we can take it for granted sometimes. But with a drought, something which is used in a hundred ordinary ways every day becomes anything but ordinary. And our eyes are opened, and we see water as the precious and the life-giving element that it has always been. Water, of course, has always played an important role in God's relationship with us, with his people. For instance, at the beginning of time, we know the Holy Spirit hovered over the waters. And when humanity had sunk so low into sin, God sent a great flood to wash it all away. In the great exodus, God parted the waters of the Red Sea to set his people free. And of course, later, water would flow from Jesus' side as he hung on the cross for our salvation. So, of course, it was very natural for John the Baptist to use baptism, immersion and washing in water, as a symbol of washing away people's sins. And people came flocking to him for that. They were absolutely thirsting for forgiveness. They hungered to be returning to God. I've always thought that the scene looking down on the Jordan River when that was going on must have been a spectacular sight. No doubt there were hundreds, maybe thousands of people, wanting to be baptized by John. Because there was this tremendous movement at the time back towards God. Again, people were hungering for the Messiah. They really wanted the Savior to come. They wanted to be reunited with God. And then, of course, as we heard, Jesus comes upon this scene with these big throngs of people. And he joins the gathering crowd, and eventually he's baptized himself by his cousin John. And when that happened, as Mark told us this morning, the heavens were torn open, and the Holy Spirit descended, and God spoke and said, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. Question is this, though. Why would Jesus need to be baptized? Why would Jesus need to be baptized? The only one without sin, the one without sin, the divine one, why would he need to be baptized? Well, because he wanted to identify with our desire to be cleansed and to return to God. And Jesus could have just stood on the hill overlooking the river and said, well, isn't that interesting? Look at all these folks that are getting baptized by my cousin, John the Baptist. But he didn't. Instead, as he looked at that scene, he thought, these people are all searching for God. They're searching for truth. They're searching for meaning. And I'm going to walk with them side by side. I'm going to walk with them to help them find my Father. And so Jesus, again, was fully divine and no need of being baptized. He decides to walk down into that crowd and be a human among humans. Be one of us. The Father sees this, of course, and he speaks from heaven. Pleased to know that as his people met his Son, as we meet Jesus, they'll soon discover who he really is, who the Father really is, and what it means, too, to be truly human. What it means to be truly human. Baptism, as you know, was the end of Jesus' private life, all those years of obscurity that he spent in Nazareth, and the beginning of his public ministry. But it was at that moment that he dedicated himself to the service of God's children, to you and I. It was at that moment that we discovered Jesus' true identity, the beloved Son of God, our Savior, our Messiah. It was at that moment that God prepares Jesus for his mission by giving him the gift of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus' baptism signifies not just the beginning of his public ministry, but also the beginning of the New Testament in a sense, right? The beginning of a new relationship with God and with all of us. A new way for God to relate to all of his children through his son, through our Savior, through Jesus. And of course, Jesus' baptism is the foundation of our own baptism. At baptism, you and I too were cleansed and purified in water and dedicated to a mission in this world to take Christ with us, to take his peace and love with us everywhere that we go. At baptism, we too were given the gift of the Holy Spirit to strengthen us and to guide us in that mission. At baptism, we too are proclaimed sons and daughters of our Heavenly Father. Unfortunately, though, like the gift of ordinary water, we can often take the gift of our baptism very much for granted, not even give it a second thought. 
We can live our lives sometimes as if we were not God's children, if we're not his sons and daughters, as if we never heard the gospel. Do you presume that some of those folks that stormed the Capitol the other day have been baptized in their life? Certainly some had. They didn't live like it, though, did they? They didn't act like it. Can we presume that some of those who were doing the looting and the vandalizing last summer have been baptized? Absolutely. But they didn't live like it. They didn't act like it, like they remembered that at all. Every time we sin, that's what we do. We're not living as if we're baptized. We're living as if we've forgotten that we're God's sons and daughters, that we're called to something more, that we're called to the real humanity of Jesus Christ. We can live our lives sometimes as if we don't know that we're loved beyond all our wildest dreams by our Heavenly Father. We can live our lives sometimes as if Christ never died on the cross for us, as if God is withholding his mercy and his love and his forgiveness somehow. We can live our lives sometimes as if we have never been given the mission to take Christ's love and peace into every interaction that we have, as if the Holy Spirit never came to help us accomplish that. Now, just as we can easily forget how precious and life-giving water is, so too we can overlook how precious and life-giving our baptism really is. Baptism changes us forever. We can see the soul of a baptized person it looks different than the soul of someone who's not. It makes us God's children in an astounding way. And it means that we have a mission to perform, though, a mission that the Holy Spirit will help us to fulfill. So Jesus' baptism in today's gospel should remind us of our own, of course. And I'd encourage you to go back home, and if there's photographs, if there's anything from your baptism, take a look. Take a look. Pray about that. Meditate about that. Reflect on that. Jesus' baptism is a reminder of the great privilege it is to be baptized, to be his disciples, to be sons and daughters of our Heavenly Father. It's also a reminder of the great challenge that our baptism presents for us. Are we up to the challenge? We have to each ask ourselves that question. Am I up to the challenge? With the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and with Jesus walking with us every step of the way, we can confidently say, yes, I am. Actually, I must be. Together, let us profess our beautiful Catholic faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. An apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Just as the heavens were opened at Jesus' baptism, in prayer we ask the Father to open the fountain of his blessings for us and for our world. For Pope Francis, Bishop Malloy, and our beloved Catholic Church, 
that the Holy Spirit may always overshadow her with truth and power. We pray to the Lord. For our beloved nation and for all those entrusted with the work of the government, that all division and violence will come to an end, that lasting peace and unity will be attained, and that all public officials will always serve the cause of right and justice, we pray to the Lord. For those who have become lukewarm in their faith, that the spirit given them at their baptism will rekindle faith and love in their hearts, we pray to the Lord. For ourselves and our parish family of St. Gall, that we may eagerly follow Christ's call at our baptism to bring his love and peace into every interaction we have, we pray to the Lord. For the departed whose memory we recall, that the power of God's grace will bring them into fullness of eternal glory, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the eternal rest of Beatrice and Byron White, the announced intention of this morning's Mass, and for our own personal intentions, we pause a moment in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, by our baptism you adopted us as your sons and daughters. Hear our prayers and help us to live out our baptism every day by the way we bring your love and peace into our world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honor the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven, we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us. And by the Spirit's descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ your servant has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty, without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
If you'd like to receive communion on the tongue at this Mass, you're certainly most welcome to do so. When you come forward for Holy Communion, you'll simply bypass me and go directly to Deacon, uh, Deacon Greg. We'll distribute to the left side of the church first, and then he'll move over to the right side, and we'll distribute to the right side as well. Before we do that, though, we'll say a spiritual act of communion for those who are participating at home. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a few announcements this morning. Well, first of all, I thought about, you know, doing a blessing for the bears, but uh, as Catholics, can we root against a team that's called the Saints? Can we do that? <laughs> I guess why not, right? Why not? Uh, next weekend, we'll participate in the annual National Appeal Collection. You should receive your envelope for that from the diocese sometime this week if you haven't received it already. Just bring that with you next weekend and we'll have a special second collection at all the Masses. Uh, just to note that too, that uh, other than the morning Masses this week, I'll mostly be away from the office for the rest of the week just trying to get a little downtime after the holidays. Finally, in this weekend's bulletin, you'll find a copy of St. Vincent de Paul's annual report. And here to tell us more about it is Jerry Farrell. Jerry. Thanks, Father. As he said, my name is Jerry Farrell, and I'm here this morning to give you a quick update about the St. Gall Ministry of St. Vincent de Paul and to provide you with highlights from our 2020 annual report. In fiscal year 2020, we were able to assist many individuals. We made 27 home visits. The first nine visits prior to March were in person, and then after March, due to COVID, our last 18 visits were virtual. 52 total people were assisted as a result of those visits. Approximately $29,000 in aid was provided to those local families. On the revenue side, we took in a total of $32,351 from your generous donations at Sunday Collections, our various fundraisers, and also donations from members of St. Mary's in Maple Park and, sorry, Saints Peter and Paul in Virgil. Since those two parishes don't have a St. Vincent de Paul group of their own, we assist people living in those boundaries as well as our own. We pay $130 for national dues, $223 for liability insurance and expenses. Other than that, 100% of the balance of your donations goes to friends and neighbors in need around our local community. A little bit about St. Vincent de Paul and our local mission. The Society of St. Vincent de Paul is a Catholic lay organization whose goal is to lead women and men to join together to, to grow spiritually by offering person-to-person -person service to those who are in need and suffering. We attempt to witness God's love by embracing works of charity and justice to relieve need and address its causes. We give assistance regardless to an individual's race or religion or any other distinction because in those served we see the face of Christ. Here at St. At St. Gall, we have 23 total members. 15 are fully active and eight are associate members. We are men and women, young and old, and the one thing we have in common is the belief of a responsibility to assist people as best we can. St. Vincent de Paul has a set of procedures they work within. within when the St. Gall office receives a call asking for help, one of our team volunteers to take the lead and schedule a visit. Confidentiality is crucial. Even within our group, the only people to see the name of someone in need is if you are the person completing the visit or one of the officers. Also, no one ever visits someone alone. We always visit in pairs. During the visit, our friend explains their situation and provides us with details that, require, that we require to support their request. We review their sources of income and their expenses to determine what sort of help is needed we also provide them with a list of resources that they can tap into within Kane County. We talk about what they need to get through their hardship. We pray for them. Then we review the case with our officers and make an offer of financial assistance. Often that assistance is to pay a utility bill or fix a car so that our friend can get to work. Sometimes we will pay part of a rent bill, a mortgage payment, or a tax bill. We've helped people move to lower cost housing by physically carrying furniture or helping to pay a security deposit for a less expensive apartment. We never pay the friend in need, but take a photocopy of their bill and pay their creditors directly. 
We always welcome your help and encourage you to join us. We meet on the second Thursday evening of each month. I can give you information or you can always call the parish office. We have been very blessed with the generosity of your donations and I want to thank you on behalf of those that we've been able to help. I ask for your continued support. St. Gall makes it easy for you to donate by, pra by providing a separate St. Vincent de Paul envelope which you can place in the collection basket in any week. One last story about the impact your donations to St. Vincent de Paul can have. In 2019, in December 2019, we met with a friend in need that was out of work due to a medical issue. With your donations, we were able to assist the individual with their mortgage. It was a very routine visit, but honestly, I wondered if our help really could make a difference on their long-term situation. Twelve months later, this year at Christmas, that same individual called back to say that due to our assistance, they were able to register for and complete a six-month course toward a different career. They got a job this past summer that fit within their new medical limitations. They called to say that our help really did make a difference in their life at a moment when they were at their lowest. They didn't have much, but they wanted to know how they could make a donation to St. Vincent de Paul so that they could help someone else. Sometimes we go through life and we're not sure if our donations to an organization or our personal effort really matters. But this person's call to us was a reminder that each of us can make a difference, whether it be financially, spiritually, a donation of your time or your talents. It's not just that person that we are helping, it's also our Lord. For the Lord says that whatever you did for, the, for one of these least brothers of mine, you did for me. Thanks so much for listening, and thank you for your continued support of St. Vincent de Paul. Thanks, Father. Thank you so much, Jerry, and thank you, everyone, for your generosity to St. Vincent de Paul. And then one last thing, one last quick announcement. Until next year... Merry Christmas. All right. The Lord be with you all. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. And please join us in our closing song, Joy to the World. We'll sing the first two verses. Sounding joy.